Mugure Parliament in Dini. Was in Dini. Yeah, yeah, all right. Hold on the visa and this chili panyanga. Uh, point of order, Honorable House. Eh, na ita ba sa mbato ichi gara. Na ngani chifunga, seku taura okwa maita, mchiti, eh, minister watura mkana ukutari sakuti, shwae mbonzi shia ma community, she ownership trust, shunga one kwe se. Tana chifunga kuti, vapi wa mkana, vapi wa chitrambe, che kuti, shiriku chemwa, neva nawe Zimbabu. E zvekuti kuri kucherwa zvicherwa vana vezimbabwe havasi kuwa nao che uviri takaona anonzi ma demonstration achitikuwa kuna na mtoku sana andi funga watu nya yai uh, mbato wechigaro ya kanyanya kukoshera nyika ino ye zimbabwe zvekuti uh, mkuru we basara urumende muno mparliament vangade wa chiti sana ngurira kuti pane urongwa yero kuti pachinato ita Mabazi anooneka tisinga notarisi zwa na devolution zvinhu zvingave zviri zvihombe asinya yakabva pakuti vakaita section ya maverenga yebumbiro remtemo e provision section 13 vakanga vaona kuti zvicherwa zviri kutorwa zvino benefit avanhu vari ku China vanenge vachigara kana kuri ku Mondoro kuri kucherwa Lithium kuri kucherwa Goridge vari kusirwa makomba ine kwandi no miririro ku Warren Park Kune mazi kumba haru kufira wana. Kana ino ndi lendi rika meshe na hakuna jiru kuitika. Vana eva wawari mpovati. Ipa kupata kone kwa kuti. Zicheru wa zelu. Zatina kapi wana msika wana welu. Zino batira sei. Kwa ziru kucheru wa. Ndo funga kuti wakanyora bumbiro re mtemu. Ndoza wakanga watarisa. Kuti nyika zese za wakisa mtemu. Uya urukundi mchurungu. Uh, resource nationalism. A point of order, order is defeat. not a debate, Honorable Amusa. Eh? I thought the Honorable Minister indicated that uh, a, an investigation will be done. You want to uh, um, elaborate? Thank, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Danganda Siri Rapadiki, Mr. Speaker. Ma mining companies, yes, upon uya, vane a levy ino ino itwa kukanzuri ega ega mudunu eva nengevare. So pa muchurungu ya tinga tip ete local level kwa tu mudunu imomo kanzuri ino we no mirira tese ine nge ine Maria ino piwa saka zata ku itaje zne zne kutiwa nengeva ngava chitiza chitiza kupadara Maria Veku minds, neve ku local government, wakuda kujigizana, ne ema kutikana, vasati wano renewed wa residents, rabo riyale kutivarambe wa chishanda ku minds. Wano sungi wa kuluke wa chino ratiza kuti, waka pezirana, ne kanzuru maringe, ne mariza wane ngu wa shifani wa kupadara. So, muka jitari sisa, jino zazikisa shwa manga mchitana ngura futi, eh, eh, Mr. Speaker kuti, Ve mudu ni momo wano fano wako benefit. Saka wane nge wako kuwana kuburikiza ni malefa ni nga chenda kukanzuru e, shakari. But ashuna kushata kuongorora semata urama ita kutitone kuti e, zinga wedzeri wele mabatiri wanga itwe vagari ve mudu ni muruku vaj zicheru wa muruku vaj jese shakari kutivange wachipu diri lao ne kutindova rizi ve zicheru wa shachona kwete utizunge zichi ngo zichi zongo no enda kuno batira vari kwa kai kunze ve mova chinge wa chirati za ku ngendonda ndi no tenda Mr. Speaker. Honorable Mahere. Thank you very much Mr. Speaker sir. Mr. Speaker my question is directed to the leader of government business. Section 219 Subsection 1C obliges the police service to secure the lives of Zimbabwean people. Section 48 of the Constitution guarantees the right to life. And then Section 53 of the Constitution guarantees that no person 
may be subjected to physical or psychological torture or to cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment. Now, over the last four weeks, we've seen an escalation in abductions, in forced disappearances. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, can I be protected? Uh, order. 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 Yes, conclude. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Over the last few weeks, we've seen an escalation in abductions, enforced disappearances, and unexplained murders. What is the government policy on ensuring that the police investigates... <laughs> Order. Order. You, you, you can't raise a point of order when another member is still speaking. <laughs> yes, I thought I got your question. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my question is this. Over the last four weeks... No, no, I thought I got your question. I hadn't asked it yet. I hadn't Pardon? asked it because I'm being interrupted. No, your question was very clear. I thought your question was clear. What well, is government doing it, to assist the police? No, that's, it's not about assisting the what police. What is the question? Yes, that's what I want to come to, Mr. Speaker. This is the question. What is the government policy on ensuring that these murders, abductions, and enforced disappearances are impartially investigated by our police service in line with their constitutional obligation under Section 219. All right. Uh, the Honorable Leader of Government Business. Th thank you, Mr. Speaker. Say. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the Honorable Member for the question. And what is particularly pleasing is that the Honorable Member spelled out what our law is like. Mr. Speaker say, you have policy that informs what the laws must be. And we have a constitution that clearly indicates that we must protect the right to life. We have a constitution that prohibits enforced disappearance. So the policy of government is already there. What is needed is if there is anyone with information that may lead to the arrest of these individuals that they are alleging uh, abducted or did whatever they did, they must then provide the uh, investigating officers with that information so that they can investigate fully and ensure that they are prosecuted. Uh, the, 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 the policy position really of government is that we are a peaceful nation. We do not want anyone to be harassed. We want, we, we do not expect anyone to barricade their houses before they go to sleep. So if anyone knows anyone who is doing things that are contrary to our laws, they have to be reported and exposed. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mm -hmm. Supplementary. Supplementary. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm surprised by the response of the leader of government business in light of the fact that the Permanent Secretary for Information just this week justified the violent wielding of an AK-47 by a person who has not been investigated by the police. In each of the abductions that have taken place over the last four weeks, We've just seen empty statements from the police service, no investigation, no arrest, no prosecution, and no efforts by the state to ensure that those who are responsible are brought to book. In fact, what we've seen in the past, 
from the state is that the victims of these abductions and enforced disappearances Honourable are the one member, that then get Honourable turned Honourable member, on. you are now debating. What's your supplementary My question? My question is, what is the policy to ensure that the police carry out their constitutional obligations? So far, we've seen the government letting the police get away with making statements that are not followed up by any investigations, arrests, or prosecutions. Thank you. Honorable Minister. Um, Honorable, just a minute. Honorable uh, Dr. Nyoni, if you can approach uh, the chair, please. Honorable Minister. Th th thank you. Please carry on. Th thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sir. Mr. Speaker, my dear Honorable Sister, here, I don't know what is confusing me. I indicated that if she has information. On a point of order, Mr. Speaker. On a point of order. I'm not his sister. And I actually take offense at the gendered response. I'm an honorable member. He ought to just address me as such. All right. Thank you. Uh, honorable Leader of Government Business. Honor honorable. Th thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sir. Um, Mr. Speaker. Just a minute. Just, just a minute. I, I think you should, we should not overstretch the nomenclature. What I understood from the honorable leader of government business is just being cordial. Yeah, yes. My honorable sister. Huh? Huh? In as much in as much as you can say my learned brother, even if he's not your brother. Huh? Ah, don't don't be too sensitive. All right. Order, order, order. Uh, I'm really appealing that let's not overstretch sensitivities. I'm sure the honorable, the honorable Mahere understands what I'm trying to say. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Uh, um, you, you, you can't debate my remarks directed at the Honorable Mahere. All right? Please sit down. The Honorable Minister. Th thank you, Mr. Yeah, Speaker. Sir. Mr. Speaker, I thought the Honorable Member was listening when I was speaking, but I think she didn't. I indicated if she has information concrete information that the police are not acting. Then the Minister of Home Affairs is available for her to bring that information and we deal with the police uh, uh, command why they are not doing that. I have indicated that as a government, we want this nation to be peaceful. We do not want lawlessness. We do not have a, a policy at all of meddling each other. If there is anything is contrary to our beliefs as a government and as a party. So if she has information about the non uh, investigation of that particular case, I'm, I'm sure from what she's saying, she has lots of information and the, the, the minister will be glad to listen to that and be able to summon the commanders of the police why they are not uh, taking that information and acting upon it to ensure that uh, those allegations are investigated and if proved, the courts are, are there, the, the people will be arrested and taken to court. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank you. Nice. Honorable Makram. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, 
with due respect to the leader of the house, the question was we need someone independent to handle these issues because we don't believe the Minister of Home Affairs or the Ministry is doing their job independently. <laughs> yesterday, Mr. Speaker, yesterday, just order, Mr. Speaker, order, order, Mr. order. Speaker. Yesterday, yesterday, Mr. Speaker, what? yesterday, Mr. Speaker. What is your supplementary question? My question to the minister is, is, is what to is ask your him, supplementary question? My supplementary question to the minister is very simple. Why were a hundred people evicted from their houses yesterday and the police would not react? The member in charge of Highlands refused, uh, Central refused to react to the issue until the houses were burnt onto the ground. Thank when he asked for information, we have the registration of the vehicle that did Thank it you. and the names of people who did it, and no one will take the report. Yesterday, there were a hundred families burnt. They had to Order. burn their own houses down, Order. and he gives us that sort of tripe. Order. 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 Um, let's follow our standing orders. The original question had nothing to do with evictions. So if there are issues uh, pertaining to that particular incident, the Honorable Makram can uh, put that question in writing because it is a specific incident which uh, the Honorable Minister responsible can then respond to. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. But I thought trauma was an issue. Um, are, you, are you contending my, my ruling? No, I'm not contending. That's why I thank you. Thank you. A yes. Supplementary, Mr. Yes, honorable point of order. Mr. Speaker, I think I'm, I'm concerned. We appear to be working, I mean, dealing with people who could be the abductors? Why, how do they know that these people have not been investigated? Ah! Uh, Iowa! Iowa! The abductors! Oh, order! 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 Honorable Order! Uh, um, Honorable Chief Whip, I thought the leader of government business had covered the issues very substantially. Um, I move now to Honorable Muombe. Supplementary, Mr. Speaker, sir. There was only one supplementary. I beg your pardon? Supplementary. Supplementary. On, on, on the question by Honorable Mahere. Uh, I will not allow you supplementary because you are addressing me while you are seated down. Thank you. Sub supplementary. Honorable, honorable supplementary. Mombi. Honorable Mombi. I'm standing supplementary. Honorable Mombi. Honorable Mombi. Honorable Makwira Nzo. Honorable <laughs> Makina Nzo. Mr. Speaker, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Dr. Caleb Makina Nzo from Tokono. 
Ingenda zuta urawani na i honorable member. <laughs> My question, Mr. Speaker, sir. Onda siya doctor, sorry about that. Supplementary. <laughs> Supplementary. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir. My question uh, to supplement that of uh, Honorable Bajila is you indicated that council is not looking after the roads. In terms of the Roads Act that you made reference to, Zanara is actually meant to give councils funds. So what measures is government taking to ensure that Zanara gives local authorities sufficient funds to enable them to carry out that legal function? The Honorable Minister. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Say, let me also thank my fellow uh, learned colleague, Honorable Mahere, uh, for that very important question, which also gives me this platform to articulate issues relating to how funds are disbased. Uh, Honorable Speaker, say, we have got four road authorities uh, under the purview of the ministry, where we are talking of Department of Roads, local authorities, road councils, and RIDA, which was known as DDF. And apparently, after having um, graduated from this academy, Honorable Speaker, say, where you were uh, actually telling us to be transparent and accountability, we then introduced a system in the ministry where quarterly we broadcast whatever we disbase. And precisely this is what we have been doing, Honorable Speaker, say, on a quarterly basis, Zinara will flight what they have disbased to local authorities. Contrary to other uh, time, Honorable Speaker, say, where figures were not being, um, in terms of being articulated how much was disbased to a local authority, this new advent system we invented within the ministry would then articulate issues to do with uh, where funds were missed directed, whether they were paying salaries or which was the trend within local authorities. So what you find now, Honorable Speaker, say, Zinara is collecting and disbasing. And this is in the public domain where you want to actually follow the trend to say for the past five years how much was coming from Zinara towards local authorities. The question must be where we actually said local authorities now for licensing, you would find that anyone who would have his or her car uh, plying our roads in Harare might register under a different uh, local authority, which was then problematic in terms of uh, aligning and distributing the pace. But what we are doing now, we've got a port where Zinara is collecting and disbasing. And this is what we are also doing, Honorable Speaker say. But however, if the Honorable Member is not happy, we are also privy to the uh, point of actually giving precise statistics in terms of what has gone to a particular local authority or a road district council, or a department of roads, or a reader. This can be availed, honorable speaker say. Thank you. Thank you. 